deer. Do you ever wonder how many are in your area? I'm gonna show you now how you might figure that out. Hunting wild animals. We're, we're out here enjoying the cold, getting ready to spotlight some deer. Of course, we're not just enduring the cold for the fun of it. Uh, we're doing this to count the wildlife. We'll definitely see some deer. Raccoons and bear, who knows what else we spot out there. But first, let's step back and look at some of the basics of sampling. Basics of sampling. Now understand this, the number of individuals in an area doesn't just magically appear. You have to physically count them, and sometimes it's not all that easy. Plants are a little bit easier because they stay in one spot. But even with plants, I've actually only been to one place where they've counted every single plant in an area. That was in Panama. They counted, tagged, and measured every plant over a certain size in a 50 hectare plot. Now the problem with that is that it took forever. But there is an easier way. It's called sampling with quadrats. Sampling with quadrats. So by randomly putting quadrats out into a field, you can get an estimate of how many plants are in a certain area. Of course, this technique doesn't work so well with animals that move. And that is where other techniques come in handy, like mark and recapture. Mark and recapture. Now, a couple of years ago, we did this with sharks in Hawaii. You see, as long as you can identify individuals, which we did with a video camera, you can use some simple math and come up with a population estimate. But since we're actually not identifying individual deer here, we need a slightly different technique. We're counting deer tonight with the distance sampling method. So the spotlighters are looking for the eye shine of uh, the deer, so it's gonna reflect back the light and hopefully it will be fairly easy for them to see. In this method, you basically drive transects through an area and then you count the deer with spotlights. Now this works pretty well, as long as you take into account a few things. Most of the deer will be close to the road, and as they get further from the road, the probability of us seeing them will get less and less. And that means that most of the deer we count will be near the road. And as the deer get further away from the road, we'll count fewer deer. Now, knowing the exact shape of that graph helps to estimate the number of deer in the area. But the real purpose of this project is to compare these estimates with a new technique they're using, camera traps. So we want to compare what we're getting right now with our camera traps with this sort of old school method of distance sampling. Camera traps. Camera traps are one of Roland's specialties. He's helped coordinate camera traps all over the world. And part of the reason they're so great is that the animals hardly notice them. And they're using these camera traps to help answer a bigger question. We're running them in areas that have hunting and don't have hunting, and then in areas at different distances from the trail so we can see how does hunting affect the wildlife community and then also how does hiking affect the wildlife community. And that just happens to be one of the cool things you can ask when you know how to estimate the number of animals in an area. Now, if you're interested in distance sampling or camera traps, then I encourage you to watch the full explanation of how this works by Roland himself right here. And of course, if you like what we're doing, watch more of our videos and subscribe to our channel. And follow what Roland's doing with his e-mammal crew right here. Oh, and a big shout out to Ole for helping make this video possible.